Okay, this is the notes for section 66 properties of trapezoid. Uh, if you have not done so already, please make sure you stop the video at this time and read section 66 before continuing on. Um, the big idea here in this section is that we know that trapezoids include parallelograms, and we know par parallelograms include rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. So every property that applies to a trapezoid also will apply to rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. Okay, so we got to keep that in mind as we go through this whole thing. Uh, the first, the first theorem that we have in section 6.6 six is the trapezoid angle theorem. And as, as we look at trapezoids, it says the following: In a trapezoid, consecutive angles between a pair of parallel sides are supplementary. Okay, so if I look at this trapezoid over here, I'm going to say that this side right here. MA is parallel to HT. Okay? If that's true, then what the trapezoid angle theorem says is that if I take the measure of angle M plus the measure of angle H, for every trapezoid, that measure will equal 180 degrees. And I can say the same thing about the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle T. If I add those two together, they'll also be 180 degrees. So for every trapezoid, that is a true statement. So let's take a look at example one here. It says in trapezoid TRAP, below TR and PA are parallel, and we have that marked on a drawing. If the measure of angle A is 60, find the measure of as many other angles as possible. Well, I know from our, our the theorem that we just looked at that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle R is equal to 180 degrees. Okay? Well, if A is 60, that means the measure of angle R, if I add it to 60, it's got to equal 180 degrees. Therefore, the measure of angle R would have to be equal to 120 degrees. Now, I also know that the measure of angle T plus the measure of angle P has to be equal to 180 degrees. But since I don't know either one of those angles, I can't make any sort of uh, any sort of statement about the measure of those two angles. All I know is that the sum of them is 180 degrees. I don't know what their measures would be. Okay, so we're going to look at the symmetry of isosceles trapezoids now. And the first thing we have is the isosceles trapezoid symmetry theorem. I, I'm not as concerned about you knowing the names of these theorems. It's more about do you understand what the properties of these different trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids, etc. are. So when I think about the isosceles trapezoid symmetry theorem, think about what that says. It just says the perpendicular bisector of one base of an isosceles trapezoid is the perpendicular bisector of the other base and the symmetry line for the for the trapezoid. So if I look at, at this line here, this line would be the symmetry line for the isosceles trapezoid. It also would be the perpendicular bisector of the bases. So I know that this would be equal to this. I know that this length would be equal to this length. And I know that these would be perpendicular to both of those bases. Remember, as, as you think about isosceles trapezoids, the bases are the sides that are parallel to each other. Okay, next we have the isosceles trapezoid theorem. And in the isosceles, in the isosceles trapezoid theorem, all it says is the non-base sides are congruent. So what that means is that if I look at this trapezoid right here, if these are the bases, the isosceles trapezoid theorem says that these would have to be congruent to each other. So anytime we have an isosceles trapezoid, the non-base sides will be of equal length and they will be congruent to each other. So using what we know from the previous theorems that we've, we've looked at in Lesson 6.6 six here, see if you can do number two um, once you've done that, um, turn the video back on it and I'll go through what the answers 
to that example would be. Okay, so here's the answers to number two then. So we can use the fact that the sum of consecutive angles in a trapezoid is 180 degrees to say both that VMN and TNM are both equal to 55 degrees. And I can also say that if, if this is an isosceles trapezoid, that this angle here, angle T or VTN, would have to be equal to 125 degrees. Okay, and then the last thing I can say is I know the non-congruent side or the non-base sides are congruent, so MV and TN would have to be congruent. So if this is 15 here, this angle right here would have to be 15 as well. Okay, the last theorem that we'd like to take a look at is the rectangle symmetry theorem. And that just says that the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a rectangle are the symmetry lines for the rectangle. So as I look at this rectangle over here to the right, we have four right angles, therefore we know it's a rectangle. So the, the rectangle symmetry theorem just says that if I look at the perpendicular bisector of each pair of sides that are opposite each other, those, so, those, those, those lines would be would represent the symmetry lines for that rectangle. So if these are the symmetry lines of that rectangle, we know that they're the perpendicular bisector of these sides. So this would be 90 degrees, and I know that these would be equal to each other. Same thing here. And actually, all four of those would be equal. And then this is 90 degrees, so those lengths are equal as well, 90 degrees on both ends, okay?